Hello everyone and welcome to this Texas Instruments training video. My name is Ike Anyam and today I'm going to introduce the topic of TI's Generation 2 and Generation 3 LVDS 30s technology. This slide will give a quick overview of the architectures of our Gen 1, Gen 2, and Gen 3 30s. Gen 1 devices typically have 24 bits of parallel RGB data being serialized to four differential data pairs and have one differential clock pair and the control running in parallel. They're typically used to send display data, but they can also be used to send high amounts of data, for example in AFE boards or DAC boards. Gen 2 devices take the serialization one step further by serializing the data and embedding the clock into a single differential pair with the control running in parallel. And finally, Gen 3 takes it even further by serializing the data and embedding the clock and the control onto a single differential pair. These devices offer various features, but the most apparent feature of our Gen 2 and Gen 3 30s is the embedding of the clock and the data. The fact that you have a single differential pair instead of four or more differential pairs greatly reduces the footprint of the PCB, makes it easier to lay out, allows the use of smaller connectors, reduces the EMI due to less data lanes being transmitted, and extends the reach of the cable by at least twice that of Gen 1 devices. Now, a more technical benefit of this feature is the elimination of receiver skew. For example, with Gen 1 devices, typically you'll have 28 bits of parallel data getting serialized into four LVDS data lanes with seven bits per lane and one LVDS clock lane. The receiver will strobe in 7 bits per LVDS data pair per clock cycle with an internal clock running at 7 times the clock frequency. Ideally, it's strobed in the middle of each bit like in this diagram. But, since the data and clock are sent on separate pairs, pair-to-pair -pair skew can potentially cause the receiver to strobe incorrect bit values. There is some margin, but designers need to focus on loss and jitter and perform complex calculations that include stroke positions, pulse positions, and other parameters to calculate the receiver skew margin to ensure that their system performs properly. However, the fact that the clock is serialized along with the data in Gen 2 and Gen 3 means that you no longer need to worry about pair-to-pair -pair receiver skew. Additionally, this allows you to transmit over longer distances than with traditional Gen 1 devices, since the longer the cable is, the worse the skew becomes. Now, another benefit is improved system reliability and reduced EMI with TI's proprietary RBS encoding. In Gen 1 devices, static display images can include many of the same color bits, which can create DC wander and impact the signal quality along with creating EMI beats. The RBS encoding randomizes the data and scrambles bit positions to remove static patterns and ensure transitions, and then DC balances the signal to allow AC coupling of the link to provide isolation. The end result of this encoding is less jitter and more spreading of the spectral content of the transmitted data for reduced EMI, and it also helps extend the length of the cable you can use. EMI becomes a key issue for cables over one meter with Gen 1 devices which do not have this encoding scheme. Another benefit of Gen 2 and Gen 3 devices is improved signal conditioning with transmit de-emphasis and receive equalization. Here's an example of a CERTES chipset that illustrates these features. The serializer has transmit de-emphasis and the deserializer has an equalizer, which includes a test point for testing the equalized signal before deserializing it. So on the transmit side, de-emphasis de-emphasizes the low frequency content of the signal. This is because a cable acts like a low pass filter and the signal's high frequency content will get attenuated after traveling through it. So, if you de-emphasize the low frequency content on the transmit, when you get to the receiver, it balances out and you can still identify transitions. On the receive side, equalization further manipulates the signal to compensate for losses, and the receiver can still receive a good representation of the original transmitted signal. Here are some more illustrations emphasizing the benefits of de-emphasis and equalization. As you can see, with both of these features, you will have a more open eye, less jitter, and can travel a farther distance than without these features. 
This brings me to the last feature I want to introduce, extended cable length. With Gen 1 devices, cable length is heavily limited by peer-to-peer -peer skew and cable attenuation. The features that I have just talked about that address these issues help extend the cable length of Gen 2 and Gen 3 30s by more than twice that of Gen 1. Finally, this table gives a nice summary of the features discussed in this video and some other features like spread spectrum clocking and output slew rate control for reduced EMI and built-in self-testing. Another major feature unique to Gen 3 only is bi-directional communication between the serializer and deserializer. In regards to cables, this slide should serve as a starting point when selecting the appropriate cabling solution for a given system. Other impedance-controlled cables and connectors can be used to achieve various lengths depending on their loss characteristics. Here's an overview of our Gen 1, Gen 2, and Gen 3 series portfolio where you can select a chipset based on desired resolution. More options are available at ti.com lvds. This slide highlights the different input and output interfaces to fit your application. For example, if your display only accepts an LVDS input, but your processor only has a parallel RGB output, then we offer solutions where you can bridge the parallel RGB output to an LVDS input for your display. For additional resources, please reference our world-famous LVDS Owner's Manual and our various application notes. Please also visit our EVM and products page for a nice selection of EVMs and devices. You may also visit our E2E forum and ask any question about these devices and receive a prompt response from engineers like myself within 24 hours. And that concludes this video. Thanks for watching.